Another person we were very lucky to be able to help with in partnership with our neighbouring team, Edale Mountain Rescue, um, is Fraser Speechley. Fraser, you there, buddy? There you are. Hello. How are you? Good to see you again. I'm, well, I'm very well, yes. It's a long time since we saw each other, yes. It's a very long time since we saw each other. Have you, have you been well? How, how are you? A absolutely fine, you know. I, yes, I've, I've escaped all the COVID nonsense. and uh, But, yes, I've been well, you know, just um, readjusted. Life's changed. You know, I've, had to get, I've given up teaching and now um, self-employed as a builder handyman. So, uh, but had to give up the teaching from the impact of the accident. I'm sorry to hear that. We'll, we'll see some of the footage from that now. Can you talk us through what happened to you back in, it was 2012, wasn't it? 2012, yes. Um, June time, 2012. Uh, I was out mountain biking with some friends and on a very easy section of the, of, of the, of the ride. And for some reason, well, I've lost my memory following the accident, um, following the blow on the head. Yeah. Um, which means I can't remember actually what happened. I rely on what's been told. But the um, the upshot is my bike, when I got it back, the front wheel had failed, which what we think is that it buckled, locked in the, locked in the forks and threw me over the handlebars without warning. And I landed on my head, um, which... Um, caused the problems so I was semi-conscious not doing what I was told and luckily I was with um, a group of very proficient um, outdoor enthusiasts professional um, freelance outdoor pursuit instructors and you know professionals and they knew what to do so I got away with it basically they uh, they knew they wouldn't be able to get an ambulance to where we were um, and they called my rescue straight away so um, they, both teams came out. Um, the assessment. Well, I don't know what. I don't know. I don't know how it was all. How it was all done. But basically, I was. They'd seen a head injury, possible neck injury. Um, I was semi-conscious, um, and I was stretchered. And they called a the helicopter um, because I think I was fidgeting, or you know, I was wasn't doing what I was told. <laughs> so they had to anaesthetize me. So the first helicopter, they need an extra person in the helicopter, so they had to send a second helicopter for me. So I'm still being ribbed. That was too fat for the first one. They had to send a bigger <laughs> helicopter. So, um, but, yes, yeah, so I was anaesthetised. First thing I know was three weeks later, I woke up in hospital after being um, in an induced coma. Um, broken neck, closed head injury. Um, so I woke up in a what's called a halo, which is... I think I think head. Fraser, we've got some I've got some pictures of your recovery um, there now. There's a there's a couple I think of the accident, but also of the the halo itself. That looked like a very uncomfortable piece of headwear, if I'm honest. It was it was possibly well. It was one of the most uncomfortable things. You can't really see any details, but the where the red dots are, yeah, that's actually screwed in through your skin into your skull. Um, and um, so that has to immobilise your head because I'd broken my, um, I can't remember what it's called. Was it C, um, C1 odont or something? My, my, odont my odontoid peg, yeah. which basically is what they try and break when they hang you. So it was called a hangman's fracture. Um, so they had to keep my head still, basically. Um, and I spent several weeks, well, yes, it felt like more than felt like a couple of months, but I spent a long time in the in the halo, um, basically until I got infections in the open wounds, because obviously they're screwed it through your skin. Um, uh, they x-rayed me again and decided it was stable enough to take the halo off, so I just went into a, a full neck collar then. Um, the broken neck has been the minor injury, because the uh, what we didn't know at the time was um, I'd sustained a head... Well, we knew I'd got a head injury because, you know, I'd smashed mm. my helmet or, you know, and I was somewhat dizzy, um, not making much sense. But they post, during recovery, I found, you know, my memory, my short-term memory was shot, just didn't exist anymore. Um, so it was unpredictable. So I just couldn't, 
I couldn't remember the unimportant things in life. I couldn't remember. You had some um, bizarre, like, side effects, didn't you, as well? You were telling me something uh, like a... Well, I can't take chilli anymore. That's it? Uh, What's that about? D no idea. I can't taste chilli. Um, I can tell I've eaten it the next day, but I can't taste it at the time. So <laughs> yeah. And wow. if I'm cooking for friends, yeah. I have to use um, packaged chilli yeah. in a jar rather than fresh chillies because I can't taste it to see how strong it is. I've had a couple of occasions when people haven't been able to eat what I've cooked. What, what is the brain? The brain is an amazing thing. Well, absolutely. I mean, it, yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's absolutely bizarre. You know, it's... Uh, and since, it's, since, yeah, I, it's, since I spoke to you, Fraser, up at Frogger Edge that time, how, how have you been? Have, it, you know, have, have things been well? Have, 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 well, I gave up work because the, um, I carried on working as a teacher. I was working as a special needs teacher, and I carried on for four years I, I had I mean but it was exhausting I was having time off repeated bouts of um of I just couldn't do the job as well as I did my, my okay. you know you're assessed regularly as a teacher my performance went down and it was just um it was too much I was you know I was head of three departments I was managing different staff etc it was just too much so uh I gave up reluctantly but I've been so yeah, so since. It's fully understandable. I think that when things like this come along in life and they, they, we f change direction, we have to change direction with the stresses that come with them. Yeah. What, what is great is that you have your health and, and mobility. Um, and I'm so proud well, to really, see you there today. It's brilliant. It's, uh, it could have been so easily that it would have been, you know, I was, I was used to working with severe and proudly, profoundly handicapped young people and I could have ended up in a very similar state with no, you know, with, with very little change in the circumstances, you know, if, if it wasn't from prompt help from friends and the Mountain Man Rescue Service, you know, if, if they, hadn't, they hadn't got me sat down and stopped me running around the hillside, whatever it was I was doing, you know, I could have exacerbated the injury I had and ended up, um, well, well, it was, it, if if it had got worse, it would potentially a fatal injury. So it was yes. the uh, yes, it yeah, would yes. Well, I'm very so. pleased to see you there today, and thanks so much for being part of the show and talking to us this evening. A really, really lovely.